Hey, I'm Mike Buca with uh, Bullshed Swim Baits. Um, Mr. Yang on uh, Facebook asked a question about uh, what kind of line uh, knot I use uh, for my swim baits. What do I recommend? Um, I get asked that question a lot, and it's kind of hard to describe verbally on how to tie a particular knot. Uh, but let me go over some of the equipment. Um, I use a 25 pound, a 30 pound test uh, trick fish. Uh, trickfish.com. It's a camouflage line. Uh, colors of personal preference. I just kind of like it because it blends in with the water real well. Uh, usually with the six and the five, I use 25 pound test. I'm sorry, with the six and the eight, I use 25 pound test. And with the five, I use a 20 pound test. Uh, you can use more or less, uh, but I will caution that if you use less pound test, Make sure you're good at checking your knots. You're in that good habit of checking your knots every hour when you hit a boathouse or when you cover over a mooring cable or whatever. Make sure you check your knots good. Um, or you're going gonna, to gonna pop your line during a cast and lose your bait. Uh, one thing, when I check my lines, I grab a line, wrap around my hand, and just pull it. Try to get that knot to pop. Your line should not pop. Uh, if you tie a good knot. So let me uh, let me go over the knot that I use. It's called a braid knot. Uh, I don't recommend braid per se with swim baits because it will get, it will bury into your spool and you'll end up casting a lot of baits off. Um, you can use it. A lot of people do. It's just a personal preference. I personally don't like it. Uh, I like a little bit of stretch in my line because when you hook that big fish, you know you you get the rod to match your line. Or, you know, if you use braid, I would probably use a different, a softer tip rod than I would with mono because of the stretch, that she, or the lack of stretch with, uh, with braid. But what I do is I start off, take a line inch bush out, start off, put the, the line through it once. Heavy bait. Put it through there once, go back through just like you start a polymer. So now you've got two ends. What I do is I take the loop, wrap it around three times. One, keep my fingers over uh, under there. Two, three. Then what I do is I take that loop and I put it through the hoop here. And I wet it and I cinch it. And I test it. So you have three tag lines if you did it right. You got the this and then you got the loop. And what you do is you clip it. And that gives you a uh, very stout knot. Now I like this better than the Palomar knot because number one, you don't put the whole loop through the bait through the hoop with, the, with, with like you do with the Palomar knot. Um, especially when you got treble hooks, you're in a hurry. I just prefer this knot. Uh, it's just as strong. If you use fluorocarbon, which is a possibility, if you don't tie that Palomar knot right, the fluorocarbon will wrap over itself and cut into itself. It's its own worst enemy when it comes to fluorocarbon because it'll cut into itself with, with, uh, with this, this braid knot that I use. Um, it's pretty easy. It falls into place every time rightly. You don't have to make sure the strands are right, so you gotta tie a pretty power bar knot for it to work. Works good with mono, but with fluorocarbon, you gotta be careful with it. Uh, but that's what I use, a braid knot for, uh, for my swim baits. Good luck to you.